Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy Show. Step off. Come on, won't you say it loud? Hey, yo, we gon' turn the sound. Tom Clark's main event. Drop kick now. Hey, hey, what's up, kids? Welcome back to the program. Tom Clark here with you. Back again on a Friday. I am freezing to death. I know what you're thinking. We man should not have to hear about this crap till 18 days till into October. Because every year, every one of you have to worry about Tom complaining how effing cold he is. Am I right? Every freaking year, man. Every year when this time of year hits, it comes. And every year, all y'all are saying the same thing. My God in heaven, this guy. And he cannot warm up. I am freezing to death. I've I've had my hot coffee here at the at the desk today, but I just brought out this cold ball of water because number one, I'm dumb. I mean, that's beside the point. But the point is, you gotta hydrate. You know what I mean? You gotta hydrate, baby. I don't do the tea thing. I've I've been contemplating the hot tea for the vocal cords. I'm gonna start doing something because I sound okay right now. Yeah, I sound all right. But some days I'm I'm podcasting, man. Let me just tell you, it's not good. I'm cracking, cracking like pavement. I'm cracking. You know what I mean? Release the cracking. I'm just saying, man. So I got to hydrate. Yeah, I got to hydrate. So anyway, that's hence the ball of water, and hence also why I'm now freezing to death. I've been wearing this hoodie all day. I love the fall. Don't get me wrong, but I freeze to death. I, I don't like the cold. I don't like my my hands are froze. I don't like my skin being cold. When I get out the shower, if if I'm cold and my skin hurts, I'm not kidding. Does anyone else go through that? We're just going to talk about the weather here today. Welcome to Tom Clark's Weather Podcast. I've already got four shows. I may as well throw a fifth on the pile. Why not? I don't need to sleep. Who needs sleep? Not I, said the cat. Hey, look, man, I'm nothing if not honest with my audience. I'm nothing if not human. I'm nothing if not always trying to position myself. I find the need to position myself with that big screens behind my head. If you're not watching the video uh, version of this show, baby, are you missing out? I submit that you are. Okay. But anyway, um, let's get the uh, let's get the banner banning or the ticker ticking which is what I usually say. I'm trying to switch it up here today. Let's get the logo on the screen. There we go. We've got some folks coming into the chat. Everybody, welcome to the show. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tom Clark. What's up? This is a professional wrestling podcast. Been going strong for 10 years, celebrating a decade of podcast excellence. I mean, I'll just say it. I, you know what I mean? 10 years, baby. We started in 2014. Uh, I am the maestro. I am your MC. I am uh, the guy, the man at the helm. I'm the one telling you all the stuff, taking all the questions, and making some weird pop culture references that may or may not have anything to do with the business of professional wrestling. You're going to get it all here today. You want to know why? Because that's who I am, and that's what I do. You, sir, are welcome. Okay? Ain't no cue card. Ain't no teleprompter. This stuff ain't wrote down nowhere, man. I am what I am, baby. Off the cuff, going strong. Do me a favor, kids. Smash the like button for me, if you will. Please and thank you. And do me another favor. Please and thank you. Save or not save. Share this. Share this stream on your socials. That would mean loads to me. Yeah, I have no idea how much it would mean. So do me a favor and do that. I got to check my volume. I'm getting to where lately I can't really hear myself. I got to adjust my volume. I've been having headphone issues. This is the pair I usually have at home. Look look at all the stuff that it's like come off of there. That's a guy that uses headphones a lot. Yeah, that's a pro. I don't know. Uh, anyway, yeah, look. Uh, all I can tell you is I'm going to have to do something. I did order a pair of really nice ones. Had good reviews and such. Had to send it back. Wonder why? I couldn't fit in my head. I got a big head. Don't read too much into that. That's not ego talking. That's uh, anatomy talking. Yeah, it's a big head. Guten Tag, Sandy in Germany. Good to see you, my friend. Haven't seen you in a while. Sugar Shane, good to see you. JP, is it JP saying hey to everybody before he even says hello to me? 
It's fine. Ray all day's here. See, Fernando did it right. Fernando said, what's up, Tom and everyone? Very eventful week for wrestling, buddy. You said it. Lots of stuff going on. Hey, man, I'm doing well. Hope you guys are doing well. Ray's enjoying his Tom Clark's main event coffee cup. Man, I haven't drank out of mine in a long time. JP can compare me to his mother-in-law. Be nice, man. Be nice. Be nice. Come on now. I do sound like an old lady. I'm not going to lie. David Down Under, how are you, my friend? Hey, man, we're doing well. I hope you and yours are as well. Yes, Sandy, it is Halloween season. It's also the season. Tis the season to freeze Tom absolutely to death. I'm a summertime kind of guy. Uh, Robbie, what's going on? Uh, Robbie recently lost her cousin. Uh, hey, man, my apologies, my condolences to you and your family. And, uh, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, look, uh, you know, Robbie, to your point, uh, at, at 10 years of doing this, and we haven't been on the on the, the Facebook here for all those 10 years, yeah, but for a, a large number of them at this point. Um, you guys have watched me uh, uh, go through loss, and and we've shared stories back and forth of losing people over the years. And then, I mean, it's part of life, but also it can be very gutting, as you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I never shy away from any kind of talk. I've been very open about you know, um, uh, continuing to get counseling and therapy because I believe mental health is very, very important. I don't believe whether you're a man or a woman, I don't believe it should be taboo anymore. I believe people should be honest with themselves and be sure they're in a good headspace. So I think, um, I think dealing with grief is just part of that, if I'm being honest with you. So again, Robbie, my condolences um, to you um, and your family and uh, you guys hang in there. Um, Fernando says he lives in Chicago. I haven't been to Chicago in a, in a few years. I imagine you do. Yeah. Um, I've pod, I podcast with, um, uh, with, uh, Phil Lindsay, uh, who accompanies me. Shout out to Phil Lindsay, who co-hosts with me on the 6M podcast quite a bit. And he's in Chicago as well. And, uh, it was a few years ago. I messaged him in March. It was, I remember, I just remember it being March. All right. And I was like, how's it going? What are you up to? And he goes, I'm shoveling snow. And I'm like, you're doing what now? Like that's new to me, right? I think we had like a, a big hoo ha March snow here in the in North Carolina. We're going way, way back. It was in March, and we're all going, wait a minute, it's March. What's this? So yeah, it's not unheard of, but according to Phil, it's just par for the course in Chicago. Um, E, how you doing, my friend? Uh Sandy, the the boy's doing fine. Uh he works uh today, actually. So yeah. Uh Maria, good to see you. Yep. Shane counting down my tree before I am. Look, don't think I haven't been thinking about it. That's right, baby. Every year my Christmas tree goes up on November 1st. Come at me. Okay. I don't care. You know how everybody's uh, sitting around talking about, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to play Christmas music. It's going to be stupid. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear none of that mess. You want to know why? Christmas over here, baby. I can't wait, wait to wear my Santa hat. What about you? I may dig it out and wear it next week. Don't, don't mess with me. I may do it. I wear it a lot, baby. I wear it a lot. Augie Andy on the show. Good to see you, my friend. Look here, uh, E trying to pick a fight. E trying to pick. Uh, e, that's a great freaking pick you got there, brother. I need one that professional as well. So, yeah. Uh, e, I voted yesterday, my friend. I couldn't wait. Paul, early voting started here in North Carolina yesterday. I was out there at 630 last night. You know who I voted for, Jack. Don't even play. Uh, Wilf says he's going through his, uh, Wilf hanging there, my friend. I know you go through a lot, brother. I know it's hard. I can't say I know. I don't know anything about what you're going through, uh, but I'll try to empathize with you where I can uh, hang in there, man. I'm sure it's tough. We got a full house, Jack. That's what I'm talking about. Josh McManus is here. What's going on, my friend? Hey man, good to see you. Hey, did me a favor there, kids. Everybody, please. And thank you. Smash the crap out of that like button. If you would, that'd mean loads to me. You know, it'd make me smile. Who needs beard trim? Raise your hand. Right here. That'd be me. I'm so lazy. I'm so lazy. The place where I go is literally not even 15 minutes from the office here. I could go anytime. No one's holding me back. No one's stopping me. I just don't go because I... I don't know, man. 
I need to, don't I? Look at it. Oh, it's uh, it's uh, it's crooked on the bottom too. Look at that. That's uh, that's not good. Look at that. How it's all crooked and stuff. Ugh. Yeah. 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 Sandy just watched the Iron Claw movie. I have mixed feelings on Iron Claw movie, dude. I have mixed feelings. It was gutting. It was very gutting, of course. I mean, of course, if you know the story, I found it interesting. It was an interesting move to leave Chris Von Eric out of that movie. I thought that was um, an interesting choice. JP says he booed when they announced they're going to start playing Christmas music on November 15th. Oh, don't mess with me. I'll play right now. I don't care. I don't care at all. Like, Mess me, I'll do it. I have I have no shame in my Christmas. I'll bring it all day long, okay? I'm not joking, man. I'm totally not joking about that. I think there's options here. You can add your own, too. Don't think I won't do it, man. There's some public domain Christmas music out there I can add that won't get my, my stuff pulled down. There, See, there, Josh is hitting it. Look at Josh. Josh, about Merry Christmas. Hey, man, we're going to do it up. I'm telling you right now. I can't wait to it. It gets here. I'm not kidding. Breanne, finally another lady in the out in the audience. Do you guys remember the days when it would be primarily the ladies in the audience? You guys remember those days? Those were fun days, man. Breanne, every female you know that's a pro wrestling fan, tell them about me. Tell them how incredibly handsome I am, and tell them about this. You gotta tell them about the first one. Uh, just <laughs> tell about the show, man. Share the link wherever you can. If you got a, if you got a group of female like friends that you hang out with and watch the wrestling, tell them about us, man. We would love to. Uh, we'd love to get them here in the uh, audience. We'd love to get them here in the audience. All right, kids. We today um, are going to talk about. We're going to review, and we don't have to spend an entire hour in this. We're already 15 minutes in because Tom just runs his yapper, right? Today, we're going to review AEW Wrestle Dream. Um, if you follow Peaches and Power Bombs, you saw that I appeared um, this week on Tuesday. We had an early show. And uh, thanks again uh, 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 to Tina over there uh, for welcoming me on her show. And we were sorry Sarah couldn't join us. But uh, yeah, it was a fun time. We talked a little bit about the show there. By the way, kids, we did have Chris Patton uh, promoted for today's show. Uh, apologies, Chris will not be able to join us here today. Um, uh, he had some other stuff come up, uh, some work obligations, so he was not able to join us. But Chris, you're here with us in spirit, my friend. So yeah, um, you're just stuck with me today, kids. It's just me and all my hairy goodness. It's all you got. So uh, kids, again, do me a favor. You know what I'm going to ask for? Here it comes. Smash the like button for me. That'd mean loads to me. It'd make my day. How about that? Let's talk about, uh, first of all, raise your hands out there. If you watched uh, AEW Wrestle Dream, say yes. And if uh, if you did, what'd you think of it overall? Did you enjoy the show? Did you not like the show? By the way, I, I think Thunder Rose is uh, the man, Danny. I think she's great. I think she's great. Um, it got wonky with her for a while there, yeah. Some wonky stuff happening, but I, it feels like she's on the right, on the right track right now. I'm sure plenty of women have learned a thing or two from her, and I would dare say some men have as well. Um, Josh says I give it uh, an 8 out of 10. JP says good show. Um, Maria says pay-per-view was excellent. Brianne says I watched it. Um, yeah, I've read kind of mixed back and forth. Look, can we be honest? When Chris and I did the review here last week, we did not necessarily give this thing a, like a fighting chance. I, I'll admit it. Neither one of us really did. And I, it, it wasn't because we didn't want to watch it. It wasn't because we didn't think something cool could happen. I can't speak for Chris, but I mean, I'll speak for myself and say that. But what I will say is, judging by the card, I just didn't see anything big happening all that much. But we did have some returns. There were some fairly big moments happen. And that AEW championship belt did change hands, um, which I did say it would. I'm sure I'm not the only one that said it. A lot of other people said it as well. But, you know, um, I was one of the guys that said it. So you're welcome. Anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed the show. Let me start with that before we start talking about matches. I enjoyed the show. 
Um, again, my expectation level wasn't that high. So I didn't come out of it feeling any certain kind of way. And we talked, as I said before, I spoke with Tina on Tuesday on her show about, you know, my thoughts on the Daniel, uh, the Brian Danielson stuff and the surprise returns and everything. And um, in terms of surprise returns, MJF came back, of course, as you know, Adam Cole, Bebe, made his return. Swerve Strickland had an excellent spot in the ring, talking MVP and Shelton Benjamin, where, where Swerve put over Prince Nana. And that was, by the way, that was one of the best moments of the show for me. Okay, not even a wrestling match. That was one of the best moments of the show for me. I thoroughly enjoyed watching that. I think that was one of the best spots. Um, I don't want to put it over too much, yeah, but I just think it was great. I think it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. And Shelton taking his coat off makes me want to see him and Swerve. And I'll say something else. They're going to have that match. Thank goodness it's not going to be next week. Because one of the things about this company that will drive you batty if you let it is they tend to go very, 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 very fast. Okay? And because of that, there's not a lot of breathing room. There's not a lot of time to absorb what you just saw and to be able to pivot from point A to point B. So I'm glad they're taking their time with that one because they don't need to do it right now. Okay? They don't need to do it right now, honestly. Maria says, good to see uh, Adam Cole, but not happy the MJF, MJF is back up again. I get it. At the same time, I will say that uh, they have unfinished business. I'm sure they want to they want to put a big bow on that storyline that was supposed to have ended with Adam Cole taking taking the championship from MJF. Supposedly, had he not been hurt, that's what we were looking at the whole "I'm the devil" kind of stuff that was going on. So, in my opinion, wrap it up. We'll give him the chance to wrap it up. We'll see if it can make any kind of money. Uh, we sell she, yeah. Let's see. Josh says I don't I don't I don't understand why Rico came. I love Rico. I know that that may be there may be some other opinions on that. I think he's great with MXM collection. I love those guys. Oh my God, I love those guys. I'm here for those guys every day and twice on Sunday. It's so fun to watch them because they just have a blast. You know what I mean? And and I know the stuff about comedy and wrestling and all that. But look, if you're if your show has room for buckets of blood, your show also has room for lady wrestlers. Your show also has room for a little bit of comedy. It's a variety show, kids. We all know that, yeah? So I'm okay with comedy in, in doses that are that I can digest, and, and I don't want an all-comedy show, but I don't want an all-blood-and-guts show either. I want something that's a mixed bag, and for me, it fits in perfectly. By the way, if you don't like MXM Collection, I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. Be nice to MXM Collection if you don't. You're going to get three spirits visiting you this Christmas Eve. You don't want that to happen. Nobody wants that to happen, okay? So be sure you're saying nice things about those two guys because they're freaking awesome. And the same goes for the Outrunners. This show is a major supporter of the Outrunners. I'm going to get them on this podcast eventually. Now I've said it. I've put it out in the world. I'm going to see if I can get them on the podcast. I usually don't say stuff like that. I'll make an effort. I get No promises. I'll make an effort. Maria says Rico is a perfect fit with MXM. Yes, yes. Rianne says, I've heard rumors that Brian Danson may go back to WWE. I will believe that when I see it. Um, rumors is rumors, Brianne. I would take those with a grain of salt. Just one grain, perhaps a half a grain. Maria, great, great uh, point here. Uh, AW roster is getting healthy and stacked again. Boy, you are not kidding. You are not kidding. JP says it makes them are awesome. See, there you go. That's what I like. Danny says, but now is Adam Cole face or heel? Don't worry about it, Danny. I would not worry about it. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not going to because I'm I'm done with it. I'm done with that company in terms of trying to figure out what they're doing on any given day. I had a, a – Phil and I recorded uh, the 6M this past Wednesday night. And before we start, we always talk for a long time before we actually hit the record button. and. One of the things we talked about was who's healing, who's face. And he goes, well, Swerve's a face. I was like, yeah, for right now. He goes, no, 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 Swerve's face. I said, yeah, I get it. Yeah, for right now. I'm like, and it wasn't against Phil. I love Phil. Uh, Phil's one of the smartest guys you're going to hear talk about this stuff. But I just know that we've been down this road before of, of pulling for someone and then them come out and cut a weird promo or jump somebody. You're like, I thought you were, but isn't she, how come? Right? I mean, honestly, yeah. And it's a lot more than just swerve. It happens all in through that company from top to bottom. 
the entire roster, not the entire roster, but a lot of the roster does that stuff, man. So yeah, I'm not going to sweat too much who's heel and who's face anymore in that company. I'm just not going to do it. Now, mentally, I'll be processing. And mentally, I may or may not be punching a few walls. But I'm not going to punch walls in real life because when you do, that happens. See that, Pinky? Oh, yeah. You should see the wall. <laughs> it didn't move an inch. Look, again, if people want to go, you know, think about it all the time they can, it's perfectly fine. Who, where is your buddy from there? You're talking about uh, J.D. Drake? Uh, Drake is injured, last I heard. Last I heard. I'm not affiliated with, um, uh, I'm not affiliated with uh, uh, the uh, uh, that promotion. The promotion is not even an actual thing anymore, that company that I was involved with. I wish everybody the best, though. Hello, Sabrina. Sabrina Griffith is here, kids. Good to see you. Um, please don't don't think bad of me, Sabrina. Um, because you said hi, Tom. This is I feel like we know each other. Please don't think bad of me. Or is it just a different uh, Facebook account? Is that what we're talking about? Apologies. It's Friday. It's been a long week. Not a bad week. Shane says I think Adam Copeland is behind Moxley's group. Well, let me think about that. I don't hate it, but I also don't know if I, I don't, I also don't know if I believe I, I would know what the purpose of that would be. You know what I mean? By the way, in my opinion, Mox is the head of that group, whatever that group's going to be called. I don't think it's going to be Black Bull Combat Club anymore. I think it's just going to be built. The, I don't even know if they're going to name it anything, but uh, I just, for me, anytime we talk about what may or may not be possible, what may or may not be happening, my question is always going to be, okay, but what happens next? What's the logic? What's the reason? Not against it, but again, what's the reason? And if if he's there on a on a feel good, you know, I'm a few years away from wrapping it up and calling it a career kind of tour, which he, I guess Copeland is, right? Why wouldn't he want the title? Here, here's what I'll tell you. In my opinion, when you throw the world championship into any stable, then everyone you put around that belt at some point could become a possible contender. So you got to know that going in, right? So if if the idea is, all right, we're going to put Adam in charge of this group. All right. Number one, why? What, what would be his reason? He never had heat with Danielson that I can recall. Not in this company, right? And in fact, it was, you know, Roman that stacked him and Danielson on top of each other at WrestleMania that year. I'll never forget that. That's crazy. Okay. So, like, what would be his reason? Now, I know what I just said earlier about not getting too wrapped up in healing face in AEW, and I'm not trying to. But again, in my head, I'm trying to put together the logic of it. The logic. Ray says, uh, please, no Shane. Look, I mentioned the Shane thing to Phil off mic the other night. And he the first thing he's, man, I don't get why people are just, everyone's talking about this Shane thing. Why does everybody think he's coming in? And I'm like, well, dude, they're leading to something. Nope. He completely disagreed with me. And that's totally fine, man. It's okay to, by the way, kids, it's okay to have different opinions. We can all still be friends afterward. Or we can all want to punch each other in the face. I mean, I guess it's up to us, right? But me and Phil are good. We've always been good. But we had differing opinions on this. I believe that something's coming. I, I proposed the notion that it could be Shane. Maybe it won't be Shane. I don't, I don't want it to be Shane because I don't think it makes any sense. However, it's AEW. They do weird stuff in that company sometimes. I'm sorry, but they do. I Sometimes I got to get close to the mic just to emphasize my point. Just to emphasize my point, let's run down the card very quickly because I'm having fun talking and y'all are having fun listening, aren't you? And y'all are having fun saying stuff. Come on now. By the way, anybody watch The Righteous Gemstones? That may be a podcast eventually. 
Come on now. Brian Cage is your new ROH World Television Champion, defeating Atlantis. Atlantis going back to the deep. There's a lot of different jokes there, not the least of which is the boys. I don't watch the boys anymore. I gave up on it a while back. Not for any other reason that it just kept trying to outdo itself and get weirder and grosser and more disgusting and more lewd and more like I'm okay with all that stuff. But like when it feels like you're just trying to outdo the last episode, eh, what happened to the story? I don't know. Uh, see, I get distracted. Anna J defeated Harley Cameron. Ex- I was going to say excellent. Really, really good match, by the way. I really enjoyed that match. That Harley Cameron. Dude, let me tell you something about that Harley Cameron. Yikes. Yowza. Harley has come a long way, hasn't she? Be honest. When she was first out there yapping, you're like, oh. Then you see in the ring, you're like, oh. I think she's gotten much better. Maybe that's just me talking. I enjoy her being on camera. I do. When she cuts a promo, I like it. I'm here for it. I think she's funny, right? And I think she's gotten much better in the ring. That's me talking. The acclaimed defeated MXM Collection. MXM Collection was robbed. That's all I'll tell you. Robbed. Okay. I'm telling you right now. A travesty happened. A crime happened. Perpetrated on MXM Collection with Rico. Rico's a former cop, man. Some arresting should have been done that night. Tag team match. The conglomeration. Orange casting Colorado and the Outrunners. Huh? Come on now. Defeated the Dark Order and the Premier Athletes in an eight-man tag team match. Good match again. The, by the way, the pre-show, I don't remember the last pre-show for AEW that I didn't enjoy. They just got so many talented guys, man, and girls. They can fill up an entire card. They can fill up two cards in one night if they wanted to, and they do when they do that, right? Jay White defeated Hangman Adam Page. Let's get the one thing wrong that I called last week. Right off the bat, I did not see Jay White defeating Hangman Page. That's why you shouldn't listen to me or anybody else. Just watch the show and enjoy it. Or hate it. Whatever you want to do, right? Yeah. Just just enjoy it or hate it. Whatever you want to do. Perfectly fine. Danny says Fandango and Prince Pretty needs to. I miss that. I miss that. I miss that thing so much. Do you remember what they were? What was it they were called? The Fashion Police, right? And this involves Shane. I just remember them backstage and they were like, all right, well, I guess we're. And they're taking off the badge. And one took out a. It was like, it was like a water gun or something. It's like, and Shane's like, why do you have a gun? And he just kept taking stuff. He kept taking stuff, the handcuffs and all this. I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever seen. It's so funny. Oh my God, I miss that stuff, man. I just do. I miss it. Great gimmick. I, I'm here for that gimmick, man. I, I'd love to see it come back in some form. That'd be fun. Yeah, I, t- I definitely didn't see Jay. I'm glad Jay won. I love Jay. I love Paige. But I didn't see it coming. So there's the first thing I got wrong here, right? Uh, well, you know what? I may have gotten some of the pre-show wrong. Too. I don't know. Uh, who's keeping notes? Who's keeping tabs? Are you? Don't. Don't do it. I wouldn't recommend it. Mariah May defeated Willow Nightingale to retain the AW Women's World Championship. And if you think I'm reading off notes, you're totally right. I totally am. And uh, you could tell because I'm doing that, right? You at home... You folks listening, listening to the audio with the no pictures, with no moving pictures, don't know I'm turning my head to the left. It's like the glamour shot pictures. Remember those old glamour shots where everyone's looking just to the left of the camera? Like something interesting happened over here? That's old Mitch Hedberg joke. If you know that, if you know that, good on you. Something interesting, everything, everything to the left. I can't remember how the punchline went. So good. By the way, I think we called Mariah May going over last week. Jack Perry defeated Cassiori Shibata. We called that last week, too. I'm not doing so bad after all. Retained the AEW TNT Championship. Kanosuke Takeshita going over for the AEW International Championship. I think we may have said that we'd like to see him win, but we didn't know for sure. 
I think. But I cannot recall if that's what we said. So, yeah, could be. Could be. Anyway, I was glad to see Takesh to win, if I'm being straight with you. Um, I, I Last week I said I don't think that Osprey needed that title anymore, but I think Takeshita does. So I think the uh, um, the right guy won, in my opinion. Let's see. We also had Hologram defeating the Beast Mortos two out of three falls match. Here's what I'll tell you about that. I've, I've heard some people saying, why was it on the card to begin with and on the pre-show? Why was it not on TV? Why is it so deep in the, into this card? I got one reason for you. If you don't remember a uh, WCW, that's fine. If you know nothing about WCW, that's fine too. But here's what I'll tell you. What killed, what crippled and ultimately killed WCW? Well, there's a lot of stuff. But to me, one of the primary things that did it was that they just didn't want to do anything with the younger talent. They let the younger talent work each other in curtain jerk matches and on the B shows, C shows, but they wouldn't nitro like head to head. Boom. Very few young guys really got any kind of opportunity at all. Okay. So when you tell me the beast mortos to the, and, and facing hologram in the middle of a big card, I'm here for it. You know what I mean? And that's not to say ring of honor doesn't matter. It's not to say that rampage doesn't matter. Or the collision doesn't matter. I'm just saying, you know, to see them on the pay per view card, I think that's a big deal. You know what I mean? I'm gonna throw some. Uh, I'm gonna throw some uh, uh, comments up here in just a second, kids. Everybody, please be patient. I'm just want to run it down. Darby on defeat of Brody King. We said that you know Darby really needed this win, but his pay per view record was great. Was terrible. Well, he got the win, Jack, and Brody even shook his hand. How you like that? Shook his hand, not his throat. You know what I mean? That's how Brody starts off his matches. You know, how Ring of Honor guys shake the hands. Brody shakes your throat. <laughs> Sometimes I pop myself. Could you tell? The Young Bucks retain the AEW World Tag Team Championships against, Championships against Private Party. Let me just tell you something. Through that whole match, they called it as if these guys have been feuding for six months, that they've traded match losses back and forth, and that maybe Private Party had pinned them in non-title matches, but that the Bucks always won the title matches, and they, you know, they just they they had Private Parties, and then Private Party couldn't stand on the same page with them, right? That's how they made me feel during this match. Because I thought, be nice to see them win, don't think they're gonna. But the more the commentary kept working on me, and the more Private Party blocked all the big moves from, from uh, the Bucks, the more Tom started to think, wait a minute, maybe they're gonna go over. This is pretty cool. And then sure enough, they didn't go over. I don't, I don't understand it. Again, the entire, there was no build. There wasn't any build at all. The build was a, a 10 minutes, it was over, okay? But they played out like the build had been happening for for two months. And we we all know that's not what happened. So the vibe was, it's their time. When you watch it, you're like, it ain't their time because they're obviously not going to do it. And they didn't do it. Now, they're wanting another match. They're probably going to get it. Will they take them then? Who knows? Who knows? We'll see. Then we have Mark Briscoe defeating Chris Jericho to retain the RH World Championship. I was very happy about this. He's losing that belt to Chris. I don't know when he's going to lose it. Full gear? Probably full gear. I don't want it. And as long as, as, as Mark's happy, I'm happy. But chances are Chris probably going to win that match. Hey, look, don't listen to me. I predicted he win last Saturday, and I was wrong. So maybe I'll be wrong about this too, yeah? But it kind of feels like he's going to win that match. And then, of course, we all know what happened at the very end. John Moxley is your new AEW World Heavyweight Champion. And everybody, not everybody, a lot of people upset because Danielson went out the way he did. Here's what I'll tell you. Danielson, uh, from everything I understand, went out of his own accord. He went out the way he wanted to go out. He went out on his back, on his shield, as, as it were, and gave back to the company and put John over. It's something he wanted to do, and so he did it. So we can all be upset. It doesn't make a lot of sense if we, well, I guess it can make sense. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too upset. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. I'm going back up in your comments, kids. Just keep them coming. Just please keep them coming. I'm here for them. I'll, I'll get to them all. 
Let's see here, baby. Uh, Maria says it's about time for Brian Cage. I agree. I think the guy is, uh, as Chris said last week on this very show, underutilized. I agree with that. Uh, everyone talking about Motor City Machine Guns. I'm looking forward to that. I'll watch it for that for sure. I'll watch it for that for sure. Um, so, yeah, um, I love those guys. They're going to raise the bar for tag team wrestling in that company. And then it's up to that company, yeah, to book accordingly. Book them as winners, present them as legends, and then book solid teams to that they, that they can work and put on clinics because they will. They can and they will, period. They can and they will, period. Maria, I'm not watching The Penguin. Um, maybe it's great, but I'm not watching. She also says Anna Jay should be further along, in my opinion. Queen Amanada should get more TV time than her. I think Anna's doing quite well, actually. I have a different opinion than you. I think Anna's doing quite well, and I think Queen Amanada, um, how can I say that it's, it, how can I say this? First of all, I think she's awesome. Second, I I think she's got, because I don't want to get weird and, and say sex appeal, because that sounds chauvinistic, and I don't want to be that guy. And I don't necessarily think that. I just think she has a, a she has a presence, and I think she's very good in the ring. And I know that Mercedes wanted to work with her, which is why that match happened. And I thought she did freaking wonderfully. <laughs> like, uh, I thought she did very well. And I don't believe that Mercedes cared her. I, I think Amanada gave her everything that she had. And I thought, I mean, you could tell that she was, Mercedes was giving her quite a bit in that match. And I was, I was here for it. I think she looked great. She is, um, in my opinion, like if it, I think that that's maybe what they were hoping Jade was going to get to. But Queen, but, but Amanada's already there. I love her. I think she's really, really good. Let's see here. Um, Maria says, uh, Jay and Heyman put on a clinic. I agree. Uh, Ray says, Jay White looks great. Can't believe his face. Don't hold your breath. Uh, Ray says he called the Kyle turn. You totally did. Fernando says, Jay versus Heyman was fire. It was very good. Very good. Uh, Fernando says, Takesha deserves to win. Um, I enjoyed the match. I really enjoyed the match. Ray says, Cage, new RH TV champ. Good for him. Um, Devin Dowling, watching on the YouTube. What's up, Devin? Glad to see the catch to win, but what's next for Ricochet? Slow down, Ricochet. Not him. Not to him. But, like, if you're booking, slow him down. I don't mean take him to, to, to zero, but you you brought him in, and I, you know what? I guess, I guess maybe the idea is we're going to pay you a lot of money Let's just put you on Ring of Honor. I mean, obviously that's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not too crazy here. But again, like he's already lost his first opportunity to championship title. Actually, two. Two title matches he's lost. I mean, well, I haven't got pin. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. But still, like, I don't know, man. I don't mean slow him down to absolute zero. I think that's a bad move, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to give AEW unsolicited advice. They're doing what they're doing. Shane says, how does Mortis keep his headgear on? Brother, I don't know. How's he not sweat to death and pass out from heat exhaustion? Fernando says, Beast Mortos is taking too much losses. Eh, I don't know. He still pops the crowd. I think it's still working. And Fernando says, Goldberg is the only young talent who got over in WCW. Yeah, I mean, the only ones that really got any time of day in that company were Sting and Goldberg, other than, the, than Hogan and the NWO guys. That was it. DDP, I guess, and he wasn't a young guy. But he was like, DDP was 58 when uh, WC was him. He wasn't really. But, uh, yeah. Devin also said, two out of three falls style. Uh, Lucha style, I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciated that, too. I thought that match was good. Private party needs Nana as their manager, Shane says. I disagree. We talked about that the other night. I love the idea of it. I don't think they need a manager. I keep them, I keep them uh, separate. Devin says private party for Hurt Syndicate. By the way, I don't know what they're going to call 
I guess it will be Hurt Syndicate, not Hurt Business. We'll see. We sell she. GP, uh, JP says EVP needs to be done. Hate that storyline. I'm over it as well. I honestly am very, very much over it. I'm very much over it. I'm going to continue with your comments here, kids. But in the meantime, do me a, do me a, do me a solid. Don't go anywhere. If you leave, I'll show up at your door. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. Come on. I got people that'll do that. They'll be knocking, talking about, would you leave? Tom asked you real nice to, to not to, and you left. Anyway, don't leave. Instead, watch this. Boink Studios is the home of Tom Clark's main event, Tom Clark's 6M podcast, and Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast. Visit the site today for links to every podcast platform, social media, special announcements, and a lot more. Check out the site and bookmark today, boinkstudios.com. Come on now, that thing hits, doesn't it? You know it does. Shut up. Boinkstudios.com, kids. Please bookmark, visit and bookmark the site today. That sucker's updated on a daily basis. I'm on it all the time. In fact, I reworked the front page this week and added my fourth podcast on there, of which I am behind. And I plan on knocking out an episode when I get off this show here with you guys today. That's the plan. We'll see if I got time to do it. We'll see if I got time to do it. Let's see. Maria says, WB doesn't respect tag team wrestling. I don't see the guns flourishing too much there. We'll see. I won't call it till I see it. Ray All Day says, Queen is opposite of ugly and gray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I agree with that. Danny says, what kingdom is she queen of? I don't know. What what kingdom was uh, Jerry Lawler the king of? Oh. I don't know where the uh, the name comes from, Danny. I assume there's a good reason for the name, but I don't know what it is. I just haven't looked it up. <laughs> Devin says, Queen Amanada's Prince Nana's mom. <laughs> That's not bad. That's a good one. I like that. Danny says, hope we get Bloodline War Games match. I assume that's coming, isn't it? Isn't that what everyone's been talking about forever? I think. Danny says, AW has underutilized Switchblade. Could be. Could be. They've just got so much, so many talented guys. And plus, he was hurt as well. We had to say that he was injured at one point. Shane says, do you think Queen has taken Red Velvet's spot in AEW? Mm, I don't know. Red Velvet's still around. She's still around. I like Aminata a lot, though. I like Red Velvet. Dude, Red Velvet's... Dude, she's fun to watch. You know what I mean? She's fun to watch. JP says, Jericho got a lot of time to do up. You're right. You're right. But he didn't get... I mean, what was the highest he got? United States Championship when he was there? I think. I believe. Uh, Chad Tebass says, when do we see Storm? I would assume we see Tony Storm any time now. She's making her CMLL debut. It got postponed because of Hurricane Milton, but I know it's happening soon. I don't have the date in front of me. But yeah, we'll see. Da, da, da. Ray says, Red is the ROH TV. Yeah, that's right. She is. I forget about that. I remember seeing her on TV to, uh, recently, too. Ray says, Die. well, look, I think Adam Cole did the best he did. With, he did the best he could with that speech in terms of trying to convince people why they maybe should not like Max, but like him now. Nothing that happened with his injury was anybody's fault. It was just a freak accident. It was something that happens. People get hurt in pro wrestling, sometimes doing the just nothing, just nothing, and they get hurt, right? Dude jumped off the stage and got screwed up and didn't come back for 10 months. I mean... Uh, actually, it was longer than that, wasn't it? It was over a year. Crazy. Crazy, man. But, again, they're going back to this to, to salvage it. And it'll be interesting to see if they can. Did anyone else hold their breath when Cole ran down the ran down the ramp last Saturday? Brother, I did. Holy Lord. The Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Hey, man, I like that logo. What's up? The Wyatt Six tweeted earlier with clearest confirmation about who the Wyatts are really targeting. Share that information here with us. Um, thanks for watching, by the way. I appreciate you. 
How long has your show been going, by the way? Uh, Chad Too Bad says, I think Switchblade is getting ready to get a push, and I love Juice. I love Juice. Juice is freaking the man, dude. Love him. Maria tells us that Jericho got killed in Terrifier 3. Well, now you done ruined it for me. I wasn't going to watch it. It's fine. Sandy says, how you like the two-hour Raw? Well, look, take some getting used to, yeah? But I wouldn't hold my breath for that two hours to continue because I think once they move, um, was it next year? I think you're probably looking going back to three hours. So, yeah. Misfit Wrestling Podcast says it was a glitched photo of Paul Ellering. Interesting. Let me process that. Interesting. Of all the people to go after. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's what I'll tell you. This has got nothing to do with what you're talking about, I'm sure. There's very, very few people in that company on the active roster that have any connections to anything that was before the Attitude Era, except for Paul Ellering. One of the very, very few guys. I don't know if there's anybody else on the active roster that does. Ron Killings doesn't. Ron Killings goes back to the Attitude Era that's active roster. But who's before? No one's before that. No one. Not to the territory days. Isn't that something? Paul Ellering, man. Be interesting to see what happens there. So they're going after final test. Is that what you're saying? Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be a good feud, man. I think that'd be a good feud, right? By the way, how's the, because I've not been keeping up if I'm being honest. How is the Y6 thing going? Because we talked a lot about it when they first started about how, you know, let's let's see how they're going to handle this and is it going to work and how's it going to look and are they going to get booked correctly? You know what I mean? I'm curious to see how it's going. Danny says Karrion Cross versus Uncle Howdy. Yeah, why not? Why not? Well, look, kids, we're far enough down the, uh, the rabbit hole here. Let's open this floor up as uh, Ray all day loads up his question. Boy, I miss Dan Housen as well. I really miss Dan Housen. And supposedly, Dan Housen's cleared. But I can't tell you why he's not on TV. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Chad Too Bad says, I'm sure you've seen where Jimmy Jacobs stepped down AW booking. Who do you think they bring in to replace him? I don't know if they bring in anybody. Um, maybe they will. I don't know. I don't know if... If the I don't know if the goal was to add a a creative person on the in booking to begin with. I think I don't know. I can't say this for sure. It feels like maybe they just let him start working behind the scenes. Here's what I'll tell you something. Everybody here, all the stuff about Jimmy Jacobs, everybody before anyone starts attacking this dude, one guy is not responsible for the issues AEW had. Well, that guy is not responsible for the issues AEW has. Okay. So for anybody want to throw it at the, I'm not saying that Jacobs has the best ideas ever. Most creative guy you ever seen and heard. I'm not trying to put anybody over, but I'm not here to destroy anybody either. A lot of the stuff that people are trying to pin on, pin on him and put on his plate. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Cause it's, yeah, it's not true. They had problems before he started working there They've got problems now, in my opinion, in my opinion. But, you know, if money means anything to you, and it should, especially in this business, there's a half a billion dollars out there that says I'm wrong about the number of problems this company has or that that they that they don't matter as much as maybe I think they do. You know, storyline continuity, the hill and face dynamic, you know, the the hot shop booking, the the uh, the 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 fast turnaround on storylines, angles that go nowhere you know, not building over time to a storyline's fin- uh, finale. Apparently not as uh, not as uh, world-ending as I may have you believe. Shane, good call. Heyman, forgot about Heyman. Well done. Forgot about Heyman. Forgot about Heyman. All right, Ray, Jaw Ruler 50 Cent. I'll go 50 Cent. I'm not a big Jaw Rule guy because I'm a DMX guy. See what I did there? Come on. 
I know how the guy's voice changed when DMX hit. Come on now. Come on now. Don't mess with me. I know how that worked. Public Enemy or Tribe Called Quest. Oh, I'm not doing that. I won't do that. You can't make me. My show, I can't. It's just, it's too, it's just too close. And if Adam Cole invited you to the grand opening of the Adam Cole Sporting Goods Store and he said you can have one free item in the store, what would it be? In a sporting, man, I'm not a sports guy, dude. I'd probably get a basketball from my kid. I've only bought him like 20 over the years and he loses them or destroys them or whatever he does with them. He also said your friend could come and get a free gift as well. Would you please call me? Of course. Later. Ah, he, re he remembered the hamburger line, didn't he? Well done, Ray. Wanted to get some dinner, which included a juicy hamburger, some tasty fries, a nice cold glass of lemonade. Could I join as well? Of course. Well done. I like it. I like it. Devin on the, the YouTube saying, uh, Daniel Bryan entering number three and number 30 in the Rumble. Ah, uh, yeah, I believe when I say it. I believe when I say it. JP says, why is six have stalled and have not been on TV for, for a while? And talks about a new leader coming in for the, ooh. That's a shame. That's a shame. Misfit Wrestling Pod says, I've done 200. Dude, congratulations, man. Very cool. I, I call you dude. No disrespect if you're not a dude. Um, 206 episodes. Very well done. Yeah. It's a, it's a labor of love, isn't it? Only podcasters know what I mean when I say that. It's a labor of love. Like, you've got to really love what you're doing. You know, because sometimes it means taking time away from family. Sometimes it means staying up all night. Sometimes it means, oh, crap, I forgot to edit something. <laughs> oh, crap, my episode goes out today, and I haven't done any audio. Oh, my God. My entire day spent in post many, many times, I promise you. I got four shows, so I know exactly what that is. I know exactly what that is. Danny says, I think Will Washington taking over. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. There's a lot of stuff there, too. I, I don't know. I don't know. No disrespect to Will. I don't know Will. Chad says, uh, they said Jacobs was behind Learning Tree Gimmick. Yeah, but here's what I'll tell you, Chad. Let's say that's true. Let's say that's true. It's Chris Jericho. He's not going to do anything he doesn't want to do. If he didn't see that that thing had legs, he would never have done it. By the way, why is he still doing it? Why would he still be doing it? I think he loves it. I think he enjoys doing something different. And in my opinion, of all the stuff, and, you know, Jericho's always been the king of reinvention. He's the Madonna of pro wrestling, right? But in all these years of all the, re the times he reinvented himself, I think this may be the worst thing he's done so far. In my opinion, I just don't. Maybe you guys feel differently. I don't know. But I can't point to one thing that has really caught fire during any of this. I just can't point to anything. Maybe you guys can. This fit rest pod say I'm, I'm still not happy with what TK. Yeah, that's true. TK and Lucha Bros. But look, again, the other company's done it for years. They do it all the time. And I'm not excusing anybody. Is it a good look for Khan? No, it's not, in my opinion. It's not a good look for him either. Um, to me, you would want to establish as much goodwill as you can, right? And I don't think holding a guy there when he doesn't want to be there is the way to do it. Sure, Shane says, uh, your favorite Halloween candy. I'm a Reese's peanut butter guy, dude. Give me Reese's peanut butter cup any day of the week. Maria says if he's responsible for the for MJF and Cole Angle and making Jay White. I don't know if Jacobs had that much to do with, with the angles that you just mentioned, Maria. Maybe I'm wrong but I don't know that he did. Danny says problems were started when Cody Rhodes and CM Punk were pushed out the door. All right, so here, number one, Cody left of his own accord. I know that. I know that for fact. I can't tell you why. I'm just, I can't. But I know that Cody left of his own accord. That's fact, okay? CM Punk didn't help his case when he got physical backstage when he shot his mouth off that press conference, when he broke kayfabe the way he did and aired his grievances for the whole world to hear, he didn't help his case. Now, is he the only guilty party here? Of course he's not. You know, when he was having that back and forth backstage, you know, he, you know, everything that happened from that to the Jack Perry stuff, Punk just kept layering on reasons that maybe he shouldn't be there. So I don't know that he was pushed out either. I think they felt they didn't have a choice. 
I disagree with the stuff that was done after the fact. The fact that when Perry comes out, it's still – Phil gets hung up on the scapegoat thing that that's, that should be over. They're running with it. He's got the mask. It's his gimmick. I don't care about that. I just wish they transitioned it to something else. But, you know, you guys notice when Perry comes out, he comes out in the ring apron and does this like Punk used to. He still does it. Let it go, AEW, for goodness sake. Punk's happier. You're obviously happier without him. Can we just move on now? There's stuff. There's just stuff that happens all the time. Depending where they are in the country and in the world, the fans are chanting CM Punk for some weird reason. Like that that's my biggest issue with it, is that they just don't. I don't know. Let's just let it go, you know. Marie says, Wu Tang or NWA? Again, much too hard. You can't make me do it. How about this? I enjoy Wu Tang more. NWA's message hits incredibly hard, and it needed to be said. It needed to be said when it was said, and it still needs to be said today. I am not specifically NWA's target audience. I enjoy their stuff. I still listen to NWA, but I tend to enjoy Wu Tang a little bit more, if if only for the fun aspect and the entertainment aspect, because I love all the guys in that band. Um, that's how I answer that. The boy is at work, Chad. Too bad. He is working tonight. Robbie says, for true wrestling fans, we get so invested in wrestlers to the point of them almost feeling like family to us. And this goes out to anyone watching. Uh, which was the first wrestler whose death hit you hard over the years of watching wrestling? For me, it wasn't one wrestler, but each time Avon Eric died. For me, it was Dusty. I got upset the day Dusty passed. Uh, I cried that day. I've cried since then for Dusty. Um, if there was one guy I could have met, it would have been Dust because uh, I lost my dad when I was four and a half. I've made that. I've told this story here. I won't go into it again here today. But uh, my dad was a bigger guy. So growing up with that dad, me and me and dad, my dad was always a huge pro wrestling fan. That's why I still watch it today. Yeah. We'd sit in front of the TV and watch together. So when he was gone, Dusty kind of became my father figure. And I wish I could have told him that. Right. One day it'd be nice to tell. Whew, sorry. It'd be nice to tell Cody or Dustin that. And, and I'm sure they hear, who am I? I'm sure they hear it all the time. But if I could get it out, it'd be nice to shake their hand and say, here's how much your dad meant to me. You know what I mean? There's my answer for that. Uh, Misfit Wrestling Pod says, if Bobby Fish was in WWE, I would have said him since he's been around since 1900s. <laughs> well done. Man, that Bobby Fish, let me tell you something right now. Yeah, he'll he'll turn a he'll turn a smile upside down in a heartbeat. Am I right? Freaking Bobby Fish, man. My God. Woo. Oh, I see, Devin. I get you. I get you. I get you. I get you. Hey, we're all speculating here. You could be right. I don't know. Where do things have happened? Where do things have happened? Fernando says, Do you think the Rock is going to be part of WrestleMania next year? I do. I don't know what to what extent, but I do. Shane says, man, you guys, you know how many guys we still have here and gals right here? Where have we been an hour? I don't want to leave. I might have to leave. Just so you know, I might have to go soon. Shane says for him it was Eddie Gilbert. Let's see. Uh, JP supposedly, Brian Danielson, uh, they are they're going to determine if he needs surgery or not. That's the absolute latest. And if they can heal him up through physical therapy and through stem cell uh uh not surgery, but you know what I mean, treatment, then they will. But they're going to determine, supposedly, um, how bad the damage is. And if he needs surgery, he'll have it. But it could be he doesn't need it. Here's what I know. And and I say this for non-athletes because I don't know. For athletes, it's a different story. You're already in tremendous shape. You work out every day. It's different. But I know that, like, for regular folks like us, right, supposedly once they once you have back surgery, you it, it you're never the same again. That's what I've always heard and been told. And that if you can avoid it, avoid it at all costs. Do whatever you can to avoid back surgery because it's that bad. Recovery time, it changes your life. You're never the same again. That's what I've always read and heard. Who has better villains, Spider-Man or Batman? I think you'd have to say Batman's got the edge on that. I mean, Spider-Man's got a great rogues gallery, but you know. Chad Tupes says Hikaleo, Hikaleo is about to make a, his appearance at WWE. Yeah, it's a long time coming. I'm sure he's coming. They, what's, what, they've been saying it for months now, right? Is Jericho older than yeah, – Jericho is older than Brian, yes. For sure. 
JP says the Jericho Learning Tree, the Learning Tree is no Jericho Appreciation Society. I'll get it. Dude, completely right. Completely right. Uh, Misfit Rest Pod says if Malachi's black steals up early 2025, I see him. I agree with you, actually. I think he will. He wanted to go back before. Supposedly, he wanted to go back before, and they they it wasn't going to happen. They just signed contracts, I think. Like, look, just because your buddy is running the other company, no offense to your buddy or to the other company, you can't just split because it does set a precedent. It sets a bad precedent for anybody in your locker room to come up and say, yeah, I want to go too. And I'm like, you signed you six months ago. You the, the ink's still wet. What are we talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah. Fernando says Punk is at fault for everything. Well, it's your opinion. I disagree with you. And the facts bear the facts bear it out that that maybe you're wrong about that. But look, you feel how you want to feel, man. Punk never wanted to be there. I disagree with that. 100% disagree with that. He did want to be there. He was thrilled to be there. He was very excited to be there. Couldn't be happier. He said nothing but great things for the longest time until he stopped saying those great things. I think a guy like Punt needs structure, and I think he needs controls in place in the locker room and in the hierarchy of the booking. And I think that when those things aren't in place, that's when you see him not be happy and tend to get loud and start acting out. My opinion. Uh, Misfit Respod said, to be fair, all the CM Punk at least stuff could have been avoided had Tony been a boss, sat everyone down and been like, listen, hash this crap out. I am inclined to agree with you. And facts say that we're both dead wrong because they couldn't be in the same room at the same time at the time. But that's how I would do it. I would say, I'm not talking to any of you till you talk together. I'll talk to you together in a room with the door shut with the moderator. And and we hash this out like men, but that stuff works in the eighties. I don't think it works now. Sandy says my thoughts on the heel Owens uh, heel, the Owens heel turn on Cody. Disappointed. I'm disappointed because this is what Kevin Owens does. This is always what Kevin Owens does all the time, and it's disappointing. But in that company, I don't expect anything less than that. Because they just have, their guys just act according to plan all the time. It's the fact that Randy hasn't turned yet is shocking to me. Shock when it happens, I won't be surprised. You know what I mean? It's a little disappointing. Kevin's great no matter what he does. Don't get me wrong, but I was a little disappointed by that. Maria says Dusty was my favorite back in the day. His mattress. His mattress with Flair and Tully were excellent. I know what you meant. His matches. Best color commentator, Bobby Heener is Jesse Ventura. That's tough. I don't know if I can give anybody the edge on that. That's tough. Chad put me over. Look at that. Thank you, Chad. You're awesome. Man, we're holding a pretty good number here today for us. That's pretty cool. I love you guys. Rebecca says, back surgery sucks and never 100%, and more you have, the less percent you heal. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, Miss Fez says Malachi did want to leave. Supposedly, he wanted to leave when Vince was completely out the door. Completely out the door. That's what I heard and was told at the time that he wanted out. That's why, and he wanted out. FTR didn't. There was somebody else. Um, Miro wanted out. There was somebody else. Was Andrade? can't remember it. I think it might have been Andrade. But look, I, I don't know that we're talking to the degree of Malachi went knocking on the door and had a conversation. But I do think that there was maybe something said, maybe questions asked. That's what I was told at the time. I don't know. Um, I just think the timing of all of it was bad. And look, Malachi is a talented guy. He should, if, if he has the opportunity to go back and he wants to go back and that's what's best for him, he should totally take it. I miss watching him on AEW. But, you know, that's I always believe these guys and gals should do whatever it is that's going to make them happy. If it works for them, if it works for their bodies and their and their families, absolutely. Sarah says, Swerve and Shelton versus, in, versus Shelton in two weeks, I'm sold. Can't wait to that match. And as I said earlier on in this podcast here today, 
I'm glad they waited and they didn't hot shot it to next week. By the way, thank you, Sarah, for hanging out. Uh, kids, be sure you watch Peaches and Power Bombs. Danny says he is the Viper for a reason. Talking about Randy, yep. Devin says KO told us weeks ago he was going to turn when he said, I've turned on every one of they deserved other than Kofi. Yep. Hey. Oh, I see. Oh, hey, my apologies, man. Uh, he says, no, I meant he didn't want to leave WB. I get you, I get you, I get you, I get you. Yeah. Oh, look, most, not most. I'd suspect a lot of people that get fired from WB didn't want to get fired from WB. Man, I've gotten through all these comments. Man, you guys are the best. We've maintained a really good audience here today. I've told this story before, but let me just tell you something. The pandemic has changed everything. You guys remember when I go live on Fridays? I mean, before. I'm talking about before. Before pandemic, we were averaging 75 to 80 people every Friday without fail. Uh, and and now we're, you know, we're at the numbers we're at now. Hey, look, I'm not the only podcaster that says those things. Po the pandemic changed the way a lot of people do things. I'm serious. Like, it affected the channels here. It affected a lot of other stuff, too. So anybody that says it didn't affect anything is just lying to themselves. Okay. Banana says Brody deserves a huge main event push. I love Brody, man. Brody's freaking awesome. All right, kids, we're about to take this home. I'm only going to take a couple more. We're going to have to get out of here. Shane says, Tom, other than Flair, who would you love to see go up against Dusty? Tully, by God, Blanchard. For sure. And uh, Dusty also had great matches with, uh, let me think for a second. Wahoo? Um, Dusty had, uh, see, who else did Dusty work? I mean, Dusty and Arn, I mean, any of the horsemen he always had chemistry with because Dusty could work anybody. He was just so good in the ring. He was so he was so good in the ring. Uh, Nikita Koloff, John says, what's up, John? Nikita Koloff, yeah. Devin says, this is uh, my first ever show with you. I was just bored. My wife's coaching high school cheer, and I wanted to talk some wrestling. Devin, follow me where you are. Follow Boink Studios there on the YouTube, would you? Follow my channel there, man. And uh, I've got links. Um, if you follow me, look, by the way, send me a friend request on Devin if you do the Facebook, if you care about the Facebook stuff. It's okay if you don't. Send me a friend request. By the way, kids, everyone watching right now, I haven't put this CTA on in a long time. Anybody watching right now, live or after the fact, if we're not friends on the Facebook, let's make it happen, man. Follow me, dude. Follow me. You know what? I'll put my, uh, I'll make it easy for everybody. You want to know why I say that? Because there's a million and one Tom Clarks on the Facebook. The good news for you guys is I'm the best looking one there. I'm the smartest one there. And I'm the most talented one there. Don't you guys believe any of that stuff? I just like to, uh, Stroke my own ego at every chance, every opportunity. <laughs> there is my, uh, in in the feed there, kids, there you see my uh, my Facebook profile. Send me a friend request, man. I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. And uh, yeah, we'll be friends. I appreciate you very much. All the first time viewers here today, you guys are the best. And everyone that came back and always comes back, you guys are awesome as well. Rob says, anyone know what happened to Missy Hyatt? I don't know anything about what's happened to her lately. I haven't heard anything in a long time. Sandy says, Goldberg, one more match in WWE. Boy, they were teasing it, weren't they? Shane says, Terry Funk and Dusty. Great call. Great pull. Excellent call. <laughs> Devin says, Tom Clark from Rochester is a handsome dude. So, oh, see, there you go. There you go. There you go, see? All right, uh, what else we got? Danny says, uh, if Dusty ever had... Oh, yeah, because Nikita was doing that thing. Remember, he was bum-rushing guys when he first got there. Interesting story. You guys, all you you older guys know this, but they supposedly Crockett found Nikita in a Gold's Gym and had him in the ring a week later. I'm not kidding. That's what I've always heard. But you know what? To Nikita's... Look, anybody that craps on Nikita, oh, he's too big. Shut up. Dude, Nikita got very good. Here's what I'll tell you. 
Uh, it's the same for Road Warrior Hawk. It's the same for Ricky Morton. Ricky could work anyway, right? Anyone that worked Ric Flair on a regular basis at that time, you were either going to get better or you were not going to work him anymore. Okay? Like, Hawk always gave Rick good matches. Well, Rick always gave Hawk good matches, right? The same was true for Ricky Morton. The same was true for Nikita. I mean, the common denominator, of course, is Rick and his prime. You couldn't touch him, okay? But what I'm saying is, I think you you didn't have a choice but to get better. You It may not mean that you're on his level at the end of the match, but it does mean that, that next week or tomorrow night when you worked again, up here, things stayed with you. If you cared about what you were doing, staying at Tay all day long, he kept things in his head. To this day, he's got him up there of things that Rick either told him out loud or showed him and he learned in the ring with him. That's what a that's what a guy does, man. I don't hack anybody, Devin. I promise you, I'm a good dude. I'm a good dude. And if you watch the whole show, you see I keep it clean. And uh if if by the way, anyone's kids ever want to watch this show, I don't I don't go south. I don't work blue. Uh I uh, the four podcasts, there's one I curse on, and that's the Ted Lasso podcast. And it's just because they curse on the show and, and we want to we want to repeat the commentary and repeat the dialogue. So we use the curse words on that show. By the way, again, for new viewers, thank you, of course, for tuning in. Tom Clark's main event, Tom Clark's 6M podcast, Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast, and Tom Clark's Substack podcast. I'm out of breath. I need a nap. Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast returns tomorrow. Brand new episodes every Saturday until we finish season three and the series. Tomorrow, episode number eight from season three premieres tomorrow on Boink Studios YouTube and on boinkstudios.com. It's our review, episode number eight tomorrow from season three. It's our review of We'll Never Have Paris. Great episode. We're ticking down the time, kids, till we have finished that show until if and when season four happens. And Brett Goldstein is now confirmed, by the way. He is coming back for a season four. Sudeikis has not yet confirmed. That's interesting. So we'll see what happens. Before we go, kids, speaking of two nations, if you're a Ted Lasso fan, do me a favor, follow us. Check this out. Wait a minute. Here we go. Two Nations Under Ted, a Ted Lasso podcast, reviews all episodes of the Apple TV series with opinions from both sides of the Atlantic. Featuring Tom Clark in the US and Jay Luft and Joe Higgins in the UK. Join them as they dive into all three seasons of Ted Lasso, with both video and audio versions available on boinkstudios.com. There you have it. We have a blast on that show. I'm going to miss doing it, okay? But tomorrow's episode eight, and there's only 12 episodes in season three. So five left. We're done. We're going to do a series wrap up. We're all going to eat food on the show. If you follow the podcast, you know, every time we record together, we all end because all right, I end up starving to death because for me, when we record behind the scenes here, they're in the UK. They're five hours ahead of me. OK, so if we typically record at three o'clock my time, it's eight o'clock for them. They've had their dinner. They're going to go to bed in a few hours. They're going to go to bed probably as soon as we finish recording for me. I probably have skipped lunch and I'm not even close to dinner. Okay. So when we start talking about food on the podcast, I get so freaking hungry. It's insane. So on the last, on the series rundown, the series review, we're all going to eat. And I think we might have shawarma. Going to have kebabs for sure. Uh, And we're probably also going to have shawarma. I want to, right? Because both those foods were mentioned on the show. And uh, I just thought it would be cool for all of us to partake in it. We can't be in the same country at the same time. But uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm very much kind of looking forward to it. Sandy, thanks again for hanging out. I haven't seen you in a long time. I appreciate you, my friend. Good night to Sandy in Germany. Kids, I hate to leave. I'm having a blast. I'd love to stay forever, but I got to get on the road here shortly and go uh, do some stuff. Do me a favor, kids. I've asked you for a lot of things here on the pod today, and I still got some of you hanging out here with me, and I do appreciate it. Number one, thanks for hitting that like button. You guys did that through the whole show. I very much appreciate you folks for doing that. All right, so please continue to do so. Every time I'm here, it means loads to me. Thanks for sharing the pod. Also, thank you for visiting and bookmarking boinkstudios.com, B-O-I-N-K, boinkstudios.com. 
You'll find links to all of my podcasts there. You'll also find podcast links to the co-hosts that I work with on a regular basis. You'll find social media links there as well. And everything you need to know about what we're doing at Boring Studios is on our website. I update it every day. And uh, the YouTube is updated all the time with brand new episodes. A new episode of each one of my shows comes out every week. So once you follow, you get updated. By the way, none of my content is behind a paywall. Not an ounce of it. The day may come where I start, you know, using like, uh, um, you know, uh, specials or, or offering extra content if you want to, you know, on Patreon or whatever it is or put it behind a paywall. But as of right now today, none of that stuff is happening. Um, I just like sharing my stuff. I love podcasting. I love writing. Um, it's it's what I it's what I'm here for, man. I, I just thoroughly enjoy, thoroughly enjoy doing it. I love connecting to you folks. I love having conversations. I love sharing uh, our love of pro wrestling and pop culture and geek culture and everything in between. So uh, I appreciate you very much. By next time you see me, hopefully all this is going to be trimmed down because in a few months I'm gonna be looking like Santa Claus, which I'm okay with because I'm a Christmas guy, as I've made clear here today. Davey coming in at the last minute. Davey, you're awesome, man. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming in at all. Watch the replay, man. Devin, thanks uh, thanks again for joining. For all the new uh, viewers that watch live and the new listeners that are listening after the fact and for our established audience that watch live today and listen after the fact, I'm Tom Clark. I appreciate you very much hanging out with us. It's been a blast to be here with you today. I appreciate your support. You guys are the absolute best. Please share the shows wherever you can. And do me another favor before you go. Hold on. Have yourself a great weekend. Enjoy some pro wrestling. By the way, shout out to Zach Sabre Jr., your new IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. I got to get caught up on New Japan. I found the result. I found the result before I watched the freaking show. And I got to go watch the show because Zach's my man. So there you go, kids. I appreciate you once again. Thanks, folks, for tuning in to us here today. Don't miss Two Nations Under Ted tomorrow, a brand new episode of 6M Podcast. This coming Tuesday continues our Blade Trilogy. We wrap it up with Blade Trinity. I know what you're thinking. Why? I ask myself the same thing. But anyway, we'll be back for that. Again, kids, have a great weekend. Thanks for uh, uh, putting up with me. I appreciate you very much. Tell your friends about the show, and I love you guys a lot. We'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, kids.